Well, thank you. It's an impressive crowd to draw tonight. Thanks for coming. So um, how many people have lived here in Southern California for 10 years? Raise your hands. OK. 20 years. 30 years. 40? 50? Wow. OK. 60. Oh, hey. All right. 70. OK. All right. We're going to stop there, because I don't want to embarrass anybody. OK, my point of my talk tonight is that the ocean is changing. And it's changing sometimes so slowly that we don't even know what's happening. So what I've been getting for the last 8 to 10 years is what is going on with sharks in Southern California. And I get it every single summer. And I, too, have been thinking, what is going on with sharks in Southern California? So for the last 17 years, I've been running the Shark Lab. Shark Lab started in 1969 by a guy named Don Nelson, who I got to do my master's degree with. He was a world's expert on shark behavior. And he used a lot of technology tools, developed a lot of technology tools that we use today worldwide to not only study fish, but to study sharks, rays, turtles, everything you'd imagine. So I'm really fortunate to come from a lab that has history and legacy. But the point of my talk tonight is this, and even I was confronted with this. This is what we hear day in, day out. From the news, from the media, we hear bad news all the time about the environment, and in many cases for good reasons. Now this trend started at least 50 years ago. We've had 50 years of bad news, mainly because we've had a growing problem on the planet. And when I mean growing problem, I'm talking about the number of people on the planet. So we had a little dip back during the Black Death during the plague, but after that, it's been kind of shooting up. That same trend holds true for California. So you've got to remember back in California in the 1900s, we were talking literally maybe 30, 50,000 people in California. There weren't that many people here. But look at this rate of population growth. We're at 38 million people in the state of California, 25 million of which live within 60 miles of the coastline. So you have this huge coastal population that has impacts on the coastal ocean. And we've had literally over 100 years of that. So many of you are going, this is supposed to be a shark talk. But trust me, the sharks will come. The sharks will come. <laughs> so we had the hazy days of California. And for those of you that raised your hands about living in California for 30, 40, 50 years, this was a very common sight in Southern California. I mean, we didn't know there were coastal mountains. When I first moved here, you couldn't see them maybe two days out of the year. Um, and it got so bad that literally there were, there were air advisories every day. So the point was in the 40s was actually our worst air quality. It was in the 1940s. Citizens were concerned. They were actually worried about air quality back in the 1940s. And in fact, it was the 70s. It was Southern California that drove a lot of legislation that was instrumental in passing the Clean Air Act. Now, what does that have to do with the ocean? What goes into our atmosphere ultimately goes into the ocean. And it affects ocean oceanic processes. And it affects everything that lives in the ocean. Now, the thing that I want to like to point out is that we have three to five times more people living in California now than we did during our nadir, when things were the worst. But we have better air quality now than we did 30 or 40 years ago. We've improved things with more people, more cars. We did that by passing important legislation that regulated what we could and could not do to our environment. What about the ocean? Same thing. We were dumping things straight into the ocean. We were discharging raw sewage. And with that, industrial waste, things like that were not uncommon up into the 70s. And we had beach closures routinely. So once again, uh, California was discharging raw sewage. And at the time, we're talking maybe 10 million people living in coastal California, all going to the bathroom every day flushing the lever, and where did it all go? Right offshore. So at the time, it was just screening out the big chunks, right? We had our worst water quality back in the 70s. In addition, because of LA, we had a lot of industry. We were discharging a lot of industrial contaminants that also went out. And for those of you that have lived in this particular neck of the woods, the bay needed healing back then. And it's done a lot of healing since then. 
So again, Southern California was instrumental in driving some of the national legislation that was put forth for the Clean Water Act. So in 1972, we had to clean up our act. Since then, we now have full secondary treatment throughout all Southern California, all California. So we actually have some of the best wastewater treatment that exists anywhere in the world, considering that we have 25 million people that are all discharging offshore on a daily basis. So remember, 40 years ago, three times fewer people. Now we have more people and we have cleaner, better water quality now than we did back then. Things have been getting better in these things. In addition, we've had a community that lives by the coast and loves seafood. We've had a seafood-loving community, and there's nothing wrong with that. These natural resources are here. They're red they were readily abundant, and we've had 100 years of whacking them down, overfishing. And it wasn't just fish. It's many other animals, like marine mammals as well. Many marine mammals were hunted to the verge of extinction by the early 1900s. And we had a lot of dirty fisheries that literally took until the mid-90s to clean those things up. So as a result, we lost most of our predators from our ocean. And when I mean predators, this is where we're going to start talking about sharks, right? Mm -hmm. So white sharks being at the top. But marine mammals are important predators in the ocean. A lot of the game fish that we like to eat are important predators. We have driven all those down. So for 40 or 50 years, we have had two generations of Americans that have been going into an ocean that has been largely predator to pauperate. 